The .NET DynamoDB SDK uses conventions to resolve table names. The name of the .NET class is used as a table name by default in the operations to the DynamoDB table. For example, if the .NET class name is Weather Forecast, the DynamoDB SDK looks for a table with the name Weather Forecast. This is by default and is the convention. However, there are ways you can customize these conventions and override it based on your application and the environment it is running on. Hello everyone, welcome back to this YouTube channel. My name is Rahul and I make videos around .NET. This video is sponsored by AWS and is part of the .NET on AWS series. If you're completely new to DynamoDB and using it from a .NET application, I highly recommend checking out my blog and video on AWS DynamoDB for the .NET developer. The link will be there in the descriptions below. Now let's switch over to Rider where I have an existing application that already talks with DynamoDB. Now this is an application that I have been building right from the video that I have been showing the different ways to query DynamoDB. This is a default ASP.NET Core web API application which has the weather forecast and the weather forecast controller. So if you go into the controller, you can see different API methods which interacts with the DynamoDB table. Now this shows different ways you can query and interact with the DynamoDB table. The links to the relevant videos that walks through the different methods in this solution will be there in the descriptions below. Now if we scroll up to the constructor, you can see this takes in the i DynamoDB context and it also takes the i Amazon DynamoDB. These are wired up as dependency injection inside the program.cs class. DynamoDB context and DynamoDB client represents the high level API which is using the context and also the low level API which is using the DynamoDB client. Now, based on the needs that your application needs, some of the querying formats are only supported using the low-level API. This is why I use both these in this controller. Whenever using the DynamoDB context, you just specify the .NET classes. However, when using the DynamoDB client, we do explicitly specify the table names. So if you scroll down to one of the methods that uses the DynamoDB client, you can see here, which uses the query request, we explicitly specify the table name in here, as the name of weather forecast. Now this could just be any other string that you prefer. Now if we scroll up to the DynamoDB context methods, you can see we don't specify explicitly any of the table names. All we specify in here is the type that we are querying on. So you can see here in this case, we say query async on the weather forecast. Similarly, we have another query async which is on the weather forecast. And we can also see there's a load async which is also on the weather forecast. So in these cases, DynamoDB uses the weather forecast type. So if I navigate into that, and it just uses the name of this by default as a table name. So if I switch over to AWS console and go into the console and navigate to DynamoDB tables, let's go to the tables section. Here I have a few different tables. Now by default, this code looks at the weather forecast table because its name is weather forecast. So we have a table in here which has the name weather forecast. So all the data will be read from this table. Now to demo this, so let's come back and run this application. Let's navigate to the weather forecast table and go to explore table items and pick up one of these items. So let's navigate into Brisbane. Let's copy this date time. Let's go to the Swagger UI, which was defaultly launched when I ran the application because it's wired with the ASP.NET Core API application. So let's use the weather forecast specific date, try it out. Specify the city name, in this case it's Brisbane, and the date that we copied. Now if I execute this, you can see it returns back a bunch of details, which has a temperature C, which is 26. Now this is the exact information that you have in this particular record. All the other properties is null because this record doesn't have those properties. The same applies when you're posting data using the context as well. So if I navigate to the weather forecast controller and search for the post method, you can see there's a post endpoint which uses the DynamoDB context. And in this case, all it does is pass the data. The type is inferred from the data object and hence also the table name. So if I navigate back to the API and search for the post method, and let's post a new object. So let's specify Brisbane. Here we have the date of today. So let's simply say execute by putting the temperature as 10 and let's click execute. Now, if I navigate off to the items and go to the weather forecast table, uh, let's query this by the partition key of Brisbane and click run. So now if you scroll down, you can see this data, 
that we've just entered. So if I navigate into that, you can see the temperature C is 10. Now, if I update this temperature, so let's say I'll make this as 15 and click execute. And if I navigate back and refresh, you can see this temperature is 15. So it's automatically determining this table name based on conventions. Now, one of the common requirement that I come across is adding prefix to table names. This is mainly because if you have the same applications, which is supposed to be running on different environments, let's say the dev and the test environment under your same AWS account. Now, AWS has this restriction that under the same account, the table name should be unique. So in this case, when you have the same version of your application, but different instances, let's say for the environment dev and test running under the same account, you will have to choose the names differently. You cannot simply use weather forecast. Now, in these cases, I highly prefer using prefixes to determine these table names. So using something like dev underscore or test underscore to determine what environment it's running on is a common practice that I prefer. So in this case, I have already created two of these tables, which has dev underscore weather forecast and test underscore weather forecast. Now, based on how your application is configured, it can hit one of these tables. You can configure this for the DynamoDB context at two levels. You can set this up at the global level where you set up your DynamoDB context dependency injection, or you can also set it up at the individual table level operations. To configure this at the global level, let's go to the program.cs where we create the DynamoDB context. Let's set this up. So in here, let's say where context is equal to new DynamoDB context. And we can specify the DynamoDB client in this case. So let's specify the DynamoDB client. And we can also specify a new DynamoDB context config. Now this takes in some properties that you can use to override the table names. So one of the property is, is the table name prefix. So in this case, we can prefix this based on the environment this application is running on. Now that in turn could come from a config value from your app settings. So let's say we have a var environment config setting, which we will be reading from the app settings.config. For now, I'll just hard code this to be dev underscore. Now in this case, I can specify the table name prefix to be the environment value. Now, once we have created the context, instead of injecting in like this, we can specify the type that we have created. So let's specify inject iDynamoDB context, but use this context instance. Let's run this application and see this in action. So all I have done is set up at the global level where I'm setting up the DynamoDB context in the dependency injection container to use the table name prefix of dev underscore. So now if I use this API, let's say, let's go and post a new data. So let's expand this. Let's say, try it out. Let's specify the city name as Brisbane and the temperature as 10 again. Now in this case, let's click and execute. And this is going to write the data into DynamoDB. But if I navigate back into DynamoDB tables, let's go into the dev table and explore the table items. This time, this data was written into this table. So if I expand this item, you can see this is 10. So if I come here and update this data, so let's say this is going to be 12 and say execute. And let's say refresh this. This has the data updated, which is 12 degrees Celsius. Now, in this case, DynamoDB automatically appended the prefix dev underscore to the, all the table names that it is using in its operations. So as soon as it saw the weather forecast type, it prefixed it with dev underscore. Now, if my application is going to be running in the test environment, I will have this to be test underscore. Now, again, this can come from app settings, but for now, I'm simply using a hard-coded value. If you want to learn how to use configurations in a .NET application, I highly recommend checking out my linked video here or in the descriptions below. So let's make this as test and let's run this again. Now, if I use the same API to make an update, so let's make this as 15 and let's say execute, this is going to write into the test underscore table. So if I come back and refresh this, the dev underscore table is still 12 degrees Celsius. So if I navigate back to DynamoDB to tables and let's go to the test table and let's say explore table items and you can see the 15 degrees Celsius item inside here. 
So based on the application and how it's configured, now this is talking to different tables in the same AWS account. Now you can also configure this table name prefix at the individual DynamoDB operations level. So let's comment the table name prefix. So let's make sure to put that in a new line and comment this out, which means it's no longer using any of these conventions. Let's switch over to the weather forecast controller and any place we're using the DynamoDB context, you can also pass in an additional configuration. So right after passing the city name and date, you can also pass an optional new DynamoDB operation config. Now note, in before we were creating a DynamoDB context config, however now we are creating an operation config. This is because this is at the operation level. So similarly, in this case, you can also pass a table name prefix and you can specify test underscore or dev underscore in here as well. But this means this gets applied only for this specific operation. So based on your application on how you are accessing the data, you can configure the prefix at different levels. I usually tend to use this at the application level because I normally have all the tables below that application to be configured for that environment. Now at the operation level config, you can also override the table name itself. So rather than just specifying a prefix, you can also specify the override table name property. Now this is used to override the table name and hit the table explicitly. Now in this case, I can configure this to talk directly to dev underscore weather forecast table. So let's specify weather forecast. Let's make sure to format this so that it comes in a new line. Now in this case, I'm talking to the dev underscore weather forecast regardless of what's configured at any of the other levels. So I have overridden the table name in this particular instance. Now, since in the program.cs, we have commended off the table name prefix, this is not going to attach any prefix to the table names. Otherwise, we would have attached the test underscore prefix to this overridden table name as well but that table does not exist. So in this case, if the table name prefix is not specified, and let's say we are specifying an override table name, we can run this and get the data from override table name. Now, once we have the API loaded, let's switch back to the edit item. Let's copy this date from here, and let's paste this inside this specific date. So let's specify Brisbane and the date that we just copied and click execute. Now, in this case, this returns a temperature as 12 degrees Celsius. This is the temperature inside the dev underscore database and the test one is currently 15. So if I switch over to the DynamoDB and go to tables and let's go to the dev and go to this particular item and you can see this is going to be 12. Now, if I change this here to be 21 and let's say save and let's execute this again, this is going to return the new data, which is going to be 21. Now, overriding the table names is particularly useful when you're using different types in C Sharp. So if instead of weather forecast, which is exactly matching as the weather forecast table, let's say we have a different type. Let's copy both of these with just the temperature C. So let's create a new type inside here. And let's say this is weather forecast projection item. Now, in this particular case, this class name doesn't match the table name. Let's move this to a new file. So let's say move types to matching file names and this will create a new file which is going to be weather forecast projection item. Now let's come back to our weather forecast controller and instead of specifying the override table name as dev underscore weather forecast I can simply specify weather forecast. Now in this case instead of loading the weather forecast table let's create a new method and let's specify this as specific date projection item. Let's say get projection a sink. Now in this case, I'm going to specify the get forecast projection item and also update the return type. Now this projection item doesn't exist in the DynamoDB table as a table, but I want to read this type from this weather forecast table. So in this case, I can specify the override table name and this is going to read from that table. So let's remove this operation config from the previous method where we don't need this anymore. And let's run this application. Use the specific date projection, try it out. Let's specify city name. So let's specify Brisbane and let's specify the date that we first copied and click execute. Now in this case, even though the type is a projected type and it doesn't match to the table name, we have overridden the table name to match the one in to be weather forecast. So it is reading the data from that specific table. 
Now, if there are other methods that uses the weather forecast projection item, let's say you have a query async method also that uses this, then you'll have to update all these methods to use the override table name. However, in this case, you can use the DynamoDB table attribute. So let's copy this again and let's create a new method. So let's say city all projection. So let's name this as city dash all projection and let's say get all for city as projection and let's just pass the city name so in this case we're going to use the query async method instead of the load async method so let's specify the query async and let's just specify the city name because we don't need the date in this case so let's simply return an i enumerable of the weather forecast projection item so in this case that's going to return an i enumerable of this data so we'll also need to use the get remaining async. So this is going to return the data as expected, but I'm also specifying the override table name in here. Now to avoid this, I can remove this completely and specify a DynamoDB table attribute on this item. So if I navigate in here, let's use the attribute DynamoDB table and specify the table name. So in this case, we can specify the weather forecast table. So let's run this again to see this in action. So the Swaggle UI is loaded with a new method, which is a city all projection. So let's say try it out. In this case, let's specify the city name as London and click execute. Now you can see here in this particular case, we are returning back just the projection items and it's using the table name from the weather forecast projection item, DynamoDB attribute that we have specified. So now we are not having to specify the projection items table name in all the operations that it is going to use. All we need to do is just specify it once as an attribute on this type and it's automatically going to determine this table name for all the operations that it is going to be used. Now, even with this cases, the prefixes is still going to work. So if I'm going to re-enable the prefix, so let's say environment is going to be test and let's run this again. Now, if I'm going to hit the same query, so let's specify Brisbane and let's click execute. Now, this is going to hit the test underscore Brisbane table. So you can see this is returned one record, which is the data that we had entered previously. Now, based on the environment setting, this is going to append this table name prefix to this attribute as well. Now, even in these cases, you can still specify an override with the operation config and override this table name. So whatever is going to be specified at the override table name, that is going to take precedence. So if you have something specified here, this is going to still hit that specific table. I hope this helps you to understand how the table name conventions works when using DynamoDB context. We saw how the default class name is used as the table name in these operations. We also learned how to customize it for your application based on the environment you're running in using the table name prefix. This can be configured both at the global and also at the operation level. We also learn how to override the table names using the operation config and also how to use the DynamoDB table attribute to specify the table names for specific projection classes. Now, based on your application needs, you can use a mix of these patterns to target the right table in the AWS region. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. If you want to be notified of future such videos, please hit the subscribe button. It also helps me to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.